Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video. So today we are going to be turning Mercury into a star. So this is one I've been wanting to do for quite a while but I never really got around to doing it. So today we are going to be doing it. So that's going to be um, pretty awesome. But anyways, first of all, we are currently at 240 subs. So we are on the increase still, which is... um. I'm pretty pleased about so yeah many thanks to everyone who's subbed and we're doing pretty well for our goal of 300 before the end of the month so it's currently the um wait, what's the day oh, i'm so bad so it's the 9th of april and there's 30 days in april so that means we have wait yeah 21 days left to get 300 subs so yeah that's our little goal so can we do that many thanks if you do subscribe of course but anyways enough of me rambling on about that let's get into it so let's go to my uh, custom simulation right uh, there to get the planet nine and said the bonus there the cool custom colors there but anyways let's go to mercury and let's start the process of turning it into a star so this is gonna be pretty cool so let's slow down time a lot and now let's make this thing really big so first of all let's make it 10,000 <laughs> kilometers in size just to give us a little boost so there we go so that does look pretty nice all right now that means we can start throwing bigger objects like earth into it so let's do this oh wow Okay, I don't know why it's going that way, but let's put one here instead. There we go. Alright, let's get rid of that earth as well. Let's delete that. Alright, cool. Yeah, so hopefully everyone's having a good day who's watching right now as well. But anyways. Oh, we actually lost a bit of mass there. Okay, there we go. Now we can start eating up more earths. Alright, cool. So Mercury's getting bigger and bigger as every single earth goes in. It's getting more mass as well. We're about 15... Okay, 18... 18.9 Earths right now, so that's pretty good. Alright, cool. We've already got a lot bigger than the original size, that's for sure. Alright, so, we, yeah, we're nowhere near having a planet or eating a planet 9 yet, so... Let's throw a few Venuses in as well, alright. And a few Marses, actually. And now let's continue just eating Earths. Actually, maybe I'll to eat some of these Kepler planets. Yeah, I knew we can. 69C is the largest, if I remember. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Okay, that's good. Oh, these things spin pretty quick. Look at that. That does spin pretty quick. Oh, it's getting torn up by the Roosh limit. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. We just put them here and they just get torn up. Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Different way of destroying things. Because usually we just collide them into it. Okay. Okay, we're getting too far away now. Okay, let's just delete those. We don't want them all escaping. We don't want more objects in the system than we need to have. In fact, let's see if we can have a Kepler 22B. Can we do that? Here's my custom one right here. All right. Yeah, we can eat that as well. Okay, this is a lot larger. So it has a lot more like mass and stuff in it. I think it does anyway. All right, cool. So we can continually um, spam these in until we can get large enough to um, have a planet 9. So let's um, do that. Oh, wow. Oh, it's getting really big. Wow. And it's getting hot as well, actually. Better be. We don't want it getting too hot because if it gets too hot, it will start to vaporize. So we definitely don't want to do that. So let's keep an eye on Mercury's temperature here. So, yeah, 9,000. Let's let it cool down a bit. And we're already at the mass of 4 Jupiters. So this is going pretty quick as well. So and it's also turn on this uh, menu here, radius and composition, just to speed things up. So there we go. It always gets smaller for some reason, but I, f I believe that is helpful, so we need that. Okay. Okay, we can eat Uranuses now. Oh. I swear, right? Okay. This has happened before, so before I get... Or before I say, dang it, that's annoying. This has happened before, so it, f it looks like whenever I put Uranus... I think it's always Uranus. Whenever I do that, it always destroys my object for some reason. So, let's go back to where we were. So, Mercury is about 30,000. There we go. Let's go into it, and let's avoid throwing Uranuses into it, because for some reason, that is not working. That's very strange. I guess that's a bug, honestly, because I don't know. Yeah, any, can anyone explain why it did that? Because Mercury had more mass. You saw it had a few Jupiters in mass, and it was larger. So why did Uranus destroy it? It made no... I don't, I don't see how that made sense. I'm quite good at my astronomy, but you know, I can't see any way how that made sense. So if anyone here is a, a genius at astronomy, please tell me, is that just a bug in the game, or is that was it meant to do that? Okay, there we go. Maybe we shouldn't just spam them in. Okay. So we can tr let's try it with Neptune. Maybe it's only Uranus that does it. Okay, it is Neptune. Okay. Okay, in fact, let's just, instead of wasting time, let's go up to about... Uh, let's do 100,000, just to speed things up a lot quicker now. So we don't want to keep on resetting it every time I throw a gas giant into it, because that makes no sense why it does that. Okay, so there we go. So we've got the massive 12 Jupiters now. So, let's continue just throwing large objects into it, so can't wait can we do a saturn okay let's try saturn i don't know if saturn will do it as well or it may just be all gas giants but oh that's interesting actually <laughs> okay there we go i think that's working fine is it i don't know 
I think we should be able to have a conjupture, actually. Okay. Okay, it's all gas giants, I'm calling it. Alright. Let's just make it straight into a star to avoid that again. Because that's getting pretty annoying. I'm pretty sure you guys are probably getting pretty mad at that's happening as well. So let's put it straight up to... Um, yeah, let's make it about half the size of the sun here. So, actually go to radius. Um, that's what I want. And let's do 0 0.5. Okay, so... Come on, 0 0.5, not 0 0.4. Come on, please. 0 0.5. Okay, there we go. So it's about half the mass of the sun. But as you can see, it's quite close to the sun. So... I think this is going to be pretty interesting. So, if we keep an eye out as well. The orbit's already changed. It looks like it's in a binary orbit of the sun here since its orbit has changed, I think. Okay, the solar system still looks pretty much the same. But as soon as we hit play, it should start to um, cause some problems. So, yeah, there we go. So, it's in a binary orbit of the sun now. And the whole solar system is now unstable. So, as per usual, Planet 9 and Sedna's orbits are just, got, are just disappearing and reappearing. It's really weird. But let's go to Earth and let's see what it's like to have two stars. So let's put its temperature up to about 12 because that's what it usually is. Okay, there we go. Now let's uh, turn down time a bit. So as we can see, the day and night cycle is slightly different as there's more day than night time now. So let's land on the surface. And as we can see, we do have two stars in the sky. Um, they pretty much look, in, well, they look similar sizes as well. The Mercury's a little smaller. So if we compare it, okay, 300,000-ish radius, and then the sun has 800, I believe, or 700. So it's pretty much literally just half the size and half the mass there. So if you want a comparison, there you go. So it's a lot larger than our planets, or quite a decent size larger. Probably about the same size as the la or one of the largest planets found. So let's get the largest planet found just for a comparison as well. So yeah, the largest planet found is actually bigger, so... Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, if you want me to do anything with the largest planet found, I think... I, yeah, I'm pretty sure this still is the largest planet, to my knowledge. I don't know, but... Yeah, so if anyone wants me to get... Where is it? Oh, please... Um... That one, yeah, so I think it's... Yeah, here we go. Is it that one? Oh, it's not that one. No, this one. So, HD 1546B... Yeah, if, any, if you guys want me to do anything with this planet here, please tell me. Because, yeah, I haven't, I haven't made a video on this yet. So, yeah, that'd be pretty interesting to do. So, yeah, that's that. All right, anyways, let's get back to the main action now. So, um, let's hit play and speed up time. Whoa. Is that all that's left of the orbits? What's up with that? Let's go on to the trails. We'll just have a better look here. So, let's speed up more. So, that was Venus, I believe. think, yeah. So, it looks like all of the planets are gone except Venus and a bit of Earth there as well. So, yeah, these orbits are crazy right now. So... Right, let's put it on trail so we can still see where everything is. So, okay, Earth's getting a little hotter as well. It's getting dangerously hot. As you can see, all of the oceans are starting to evaporate. You can see the, um, where was it? The British Channel there, in between England and France, his um, has um, completely disappeared. So, let's, um, no, not at, yeah, there we go. So you can see the UK is now part of mainland Europe, and Africa is also connected to Europe as well, I believe. It's almost touching Spain there. Oh, no, is that Portugal? Uh, yeah, Portugal or Spain, I don't know precisely. Um, okay, nothing's really happened up here. Okay, what about the south? Oh, yeah, the south is all melted as well, of course. Okay, here we go. Australia and this bit here. Uh, what's that? I think that's called New Guinea. I, I can never pronounce it. Yeah, that bit there. Okay, so a lot more a lot more is evaporating. Let's just put it that way. So, how are the other planets? And how's Mars? Okay, Mars is still minus... Oh, minus 90. Okay, that's colder than usual, I think. I think it's usually at minus 57, so... Okay. Oh, Venus is dangerously close there. Wow. Okay, let's go check out Venus. Oh, we just lost Venus. Collided with the sun there, it looks like. So it's getting very hot, so it's very dangerously close. So, yeah, Venus is gone. Okay. All right, so we still have... So Earth is now the closest planet to the sun, since there is no Mercury, remember? Well, Mer oh, there is a Mercury, but it's a star. You get the point, so... Alright, let's speed up time a lot more now, and let's see what happens. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Why do I have it paused? I don't do a few years. Okay. Let's do a few... Okay, let's do a few months. Is that good enough? Okay, here we go. Oh, we just lost... I think that was Ceres, I want to say. Okay, yeah, Ceres is gone. Looks like it's possibly been... Okay, I think Ceres has been ejected completely. So, Mercury and the Sun are just completely just taken over. Because, because Mercury is so close to the Sun, they're in a binary orbit, obviously. So... They're pretty close, or they're still pretty close. So that means all of the planets, they're all just going to get like chucked out, or they're just going to lose their orbits because Mercury's so close to the Sun. I think that makes a difference because usually when we do other episodes, like say like when we did like Saturn or like Uranus, oh no, we haven't done Uranus, Saturn or Neptune, some of the planets were still orbiting the Sun and stuff. But because 
the second star is so close to our the normal sun now it's making a huge difference on what orbits and what doesn't orbit so yeah that's pretty interesting because they're moving faster because it's obviously closer so that's good because usually when you put an object or turn one of the objects further out into a star their velocity is a lot slower but because mercury is closer it's, their velocity is a lot faster look permanently above fifth or four yeah permanently above 40 kilometers a second there and the sun yeah, the sun is um, a little slower, but yes, yeah, because Mercury's the smaller one, so yeah, that's that. Oh, and Earth is completely froze now, it looks like. Okay, well, it's cooling down again, and it's probably going to get hot. Yeah, so Earth is in a very bad way right now, so it's getting too hot, then too cold. So yeah, definitely not a good place to survive. So yeah, that's not good, but anyways, it's uh, keeping out on all the other planets. So how is... Okay, so all the orbits have just gone crazy still, so we don't need to check that. So let's just keep it on trails. Let's put the labels on as well. And it's also, um, where is it? Yeah, on the view. Let's add the, um, where is it? The icons on so we can just see the planets easier. Now, if I have trails off, I can still see where all the, where they all are, basically. So, yeah, that's that. Right, and you can see our two stars in the middle there. But anyways, let's um, speed up time now. A lot more this time. As you can see, those guys are in a crazy binary orbit. But Earth looks like the only planet which is in a stable bit, I want to say. Oh, Mars is as well, actually. Okay, Earth and Mars are the only two, it looks like, which are surviving this. Oh, we may have just lost Earth there. Okay, I think we have lost Earth. It's gone. Okay, how's Mars? Mars is now the closest planet. Still very cold. It's at a safe distance, I want to say. So, yeah, as you can see right here, Mars is completely out of the Haspel zone area here. It's completely out of, like, the ring or the zone area. So, that's not good. Wow, Mercury's zone is a lot smaller than the sun's. Wait, let's quickly check Mercury's luminosity. Okay, so... It's only 4% the size of the sun's. Okay, that's interesting. Look, 0 0.04. And then the sun's obviously just one sun, so... That's 100%, so... Okay. Oh, wow, actually, I wasn't expecting all of the planets to go out like this, but it looks like, apart from Mars right now... Okay, Mars has gone as well. Is that it? Have we, have we lost everything? Like, said they're a planet that they're way too far away. It looks like Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, Make Make, and all those other dwarf planets, they're all just gone. How's Orcus? Okay, oh, Vesta's there. Oh, the suns just completely threw each other out. Oh, okay. So this whole system's destroyed then. The binary orbit has been broken right here. So if we go close to Orcus here and we move straight in on... Um... Oh, it's going to be kind of hard to get there. So let's um, go forward here. And we get to the exact point where they ejected each other. So it looked like it was right here. Can we um, get a better picture, or a better view? So, so they were orbiting completely fine until this point here. So if we um, look, we can get a real good zoom in on that. So it looks like one of them must have got too close to the other one, and then they ejected each other. So it's probably the sun that ejected Mercury, since Mercury is traveling a lot faster than the sun is. As you can see, it's now the furthest object out compared to where the sun is. So. Yeah, that's that. So if we hit play and just speed up, that's it. Solar system over. So it looks like if Mercury was ever a star, the solar system wouldn't exist. So it's been 36 or 37,000 years, and that's happened. So the whole solar system got destroyed in about 37,000 years. So, yeah, that's not good. So as we can see, the solar system no longer exists, and it's just a bunch of rogue stars and planets now. So that's that. I guess so poor um, poor solar system is completely destroyed here the closest one to the original is this dwarf planet here this is the closest one to the old solar system's location but that's that so um hopefully you guys all enjoyed this i think this is a lot shorter than usual because usually there's a lot more that goes on but since mercury is so close to the sun it has a much bigger effect than all of the other planets would usually when we turn them to stars so that brings me on to the question should i do venus next because we've done earth before I think, yeah, I think we've done Earth. I'm pretty sure we have. Wait, have we? Yeah, I think we have. I'll make sure I'll check after that. Yeah, I, th I think we've done Earth. But so, should I do Venus next? Because Venus is obviously further away than Mercury. So maybe it will have a different effect than Mercury will. So, yeah, you guys tell me in the comments right now. Should I do Venus next? Because I think that would be a good idea, honestly. So, there we go. You see all of the dots where the planets were. So, there you go. That's that. So, it just looks like a bunch of just dots now. But there we go. So, we've got two rogue stars and two rogue, um... Well, yeah, two rogue stars and a bunch of rogue planets. Well, that's pretty cool. You can see them through the sun there. That's pretty useful, actually. Okay, anyways, enough of that. Let's, um... Let's go back to the solar system here. Or well, the way it used to be, so, um... Yeah, it's my custom one again. So, we've got my custom Astro Belt, my custom Kuiper Belt there. 
custom Sedna and Planet 9. If you guys want me to, or if you guys, um, also another thing, um, if you guys, um, want to know how I made Sedna and Planet 9 these colours, um, yeah, just leave a comment and I'll do a video on that as well. And also with, um, I'm never gonna say this one, Char Charlinko, I'm just gonna, yeah, Char, Char, Char Rick, I can, I can never say that one, but yeah, you get it. So yeah, that's that. So, um, hopefully you guys all enjoy this video, make sure you have a good day, and yeah. Well, also, uh, make sure you subscribe for more, leave a like, all that. Well, I don't really care about likes. Just just leave a comment. I, li I like comments. Yeah, but let's see if we can still get our 300 subs for the end of the month. Because we are on track right now. We're, we're doing good. So, yeah, many thanks for that, like I've said. But anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.